Okay, I think this is everything I used. Um, so, firstly, blowtorch for those seized bolts that are inevitably going to be there. I've uh, got a breaker bar. Um, don't think I used that actually. Assortment of spanners. I think from. I think there was a. Might have been something like a. I can't remember, 7 or 8 for bleeding them. All the way through to 16. I was using on the bolts that um, hold the calipers on. Got a ratchet spanner with various adapters and what have you. Um, got two Allen sockets, uh, six and seven. Uh, selection of uh, screwdrivers, adjustable spanner, different size mole grips, nice heavy hammer, uh, wire brush, uh, a knife, a uh, taut wrench, um, some brake cleaner, a uh, C-clamp, and then I've got this pipe, sorry, this bottle, which I used to drain the brake fluid when I was bleeding. I had a pipe coming out of it, which is over here. This pipe, uh, and I've got like a, a bleeder, so you can bleed on your own. You just um, attach it to a, a tire and it pressurizes the system. And I just had a tray to catch brake fluid in, a uh, cardboard box just to rest the calipers on when they're still attached to the hose um, the lights some copper grease only because only one of the set of pads actually came with some grease so it looked like copper grease so I used to get that yeah, four axle stands um, and that was about it a couple of blocks of wood to drive the front up onto Okay, so I've jacked the car up onto four axle stands. Um, because it's quite low at the front and I use a trolley jack, uh, I have to put the front two wheels on blocks of wood so I can slide the trolley jack under the front. Uh, jack the front up first uh, because the car's being held by the handbrake and I put it in gear so the back won't go anywhere. I thought if I did the back first then the car could potentially roll off the block so yeah, jack the front up first, put the two uh, axle stands, put the two front jacking points below the sills, um, and then I jack the rear up, uh, jack the front up using the centre jacking point uh, just, just below the engine, and then I've jacked the back up using the... Uh, just the uh, and the support that goes around underneath the uh, diff. So yeah, there's the, the car jacked up, ready to go. Uh, I'm just going to get in and spray lubricant everywhere that I need to undo all the bolts, uh, the brake lines. Uh, so I'm going to leave that overnight. Might leave it, maybe spray it again tomorrow because it's actually Saturday today and I won't be doing it till Monday. So I'll probably spray it a couple of times on the weekend just so it can soak through properly and hopefully undo a bit easier. So for all the wheels, I've sprayed lubricant uh, either end of where the braided hose is going to go. Um, where is it? Tricky to see. Uh, Oh, well, it's just at the end of that hose anyway. I can't quite get it in view. Oh, there it is, just about, I think. And I've sprayed uh, two bolts. There you are, 
there's one that holds the caliper to the hub. Okay, these are the parts I'm going to be using. Uh, for the rear, I've got some standard uh, AT vented discs. For the front, I've got some Brembo uh, grooved, I think. Is that what you call them? Grooved? Some groove vented discs. Some big red brake caliper refurbish kits with seals and pistons. Uh, got some new clips for the brakes. Some Goodridge braided lines. Got EBC yellow front and rear pads. And then I've got some racing brake fluid, dot four, some high attempt stuff. Okay, so I've, I've taken off um, brake fluid, reservoir cap, and just put that in a plastic bag so the brake fluid doesn't get any on any of my paintwork. Um, I've got a bleeder kit which I'll be using when I finished, which runs off um, the pressure from a tyre to pressurise the system when you bleed it. Um, so what I've done is put a double layer of cling film over the top of the reservoir, screwed on this cap because you can't obviously use the original one because you've got that bit that protrudes down from the bottom a few inches so I use this one and hopefully it will cause or create some kind of vacuum as good as it can so when I take the lines, the, uh, the hose off hopefully as little as possible will come out anyway, we'll see if that works the most problems I had was with where the brake pipe um, connects to the brake hose. Um, probably can't see that well. The the nut you have to turn um, is really rusted up. Um, so it was a it seemed to be eleven mil spanner. But even with that, it was a little bit loose, so it was starting to wreck the uh, the, the hexagon on it. So I ended up using some sort of medium size. Um, I always forget what these are called. Is it mole grips or adjustable spanner, whatever you want to call it? So I got it. As, so I put it in as tight as it could, so that you could just barely. Close it on the um, on the bolt or nut, whatever you want, whatever it is. Um, then it started to undo. Uh, I also put some heat on it first, um, and then I'd been lubricating it a couple of times over the last couple of days. Um, once that undoes, that little bracket that you can see sitting right underneath the, the hexagon between that and the thread. That becomes loose then, and then where the hose comes in from the underside, um, it's just it was just rusted on, so I had to get a screwdriver to leave lever it away from underneath, and then I'll try not to get in the view, so you can see possibly the gap there where the hose attaches to this thread through that bracket. Um, the hose on the other side where it comes to the caliper, that undid pretty easy. Um, the two the two bolts that go through the caliper, uh, these ones here, the ones that have got the um, the rubber boot that seals them, they undid pretty easy. Um, then the two big bolts, well I say big, not that big, that hold the caliper onto the hub. Um, I heated them a bit first um, and used a breaker bar, sort of just going, just kept going clockwise, anti-clockwise and then you can feel it loosening up. So they undid. Uh, you can see they're absolutely k 
caked in crap. So I'll be I'll be putting them in the vise to clean all that rust and crap off them. And then I'll be able to get the um the new seals and piston in. The EBC pads come with the this little one of these for each piston so that slots inside the piston and then the the pad sits against the the flat surface so there they are in there waiting to go on so reading through the documentation they have like a, this weird red coating on them which you're supposed to drive slowly until that disappears I can't remember exactly, I'll have to put it on the screen at some point how many miles they recommend to do. But it's all in the instructions anyway. Um, I think once you get rid of that red coat in you can start doing some, sort of start wearing them in with some sort of 50 mile an hour heavy braking, like I don't know what it is, like four or five of them. Um, so the taking off the caliper was a bit of a pain. I'm not really sure, I didn't, didn't expect to see this. So this was the inside brake pad. And you can see the the inside one, it's got nothing on the back of it. Apart from a tiny little notch. But the inside one has got this thing on it. So yeah, it's really difficult to get it out. I'll have to see whether it's the same on the other side. Having done all four corners of the car, um, got into a bit of a routine. Um, I think the best order to do everything is um, it's not so bad for the rear because you can hold the hold them still with a handbrake, but the front's more. Um, I'd undo the this um, Allen screw that holds in the disc. Um, what we can do is stick something between the um, between the vents. I've just been using an Allen key, which then locks itself against the caliper. And then you've got when you try and turn this screw, then the, the disc isn't spinning. Um, so yeah, take the clip off. Take whatever clip there is holding the brake hose to the hub. Uh, it's a lot easier on the front because it just slots out of a, a little gap in some metal next to the um, the cable for the the ABS sensor, I think. Um, so get that ready, get that done. Pull the caps off the back of the caliper. Undo the two Allen uh, two Allen bolts. Uh, you find you think you're still undoing them, but they just kind of get held inside the rubber enclosure. So sometimes they don't poke out enough, so you have to grab them with some some grips once you think they're actually undone and pull them out because you can't grab them otherwise. Um, so then you want to get the like a C clamp uh, against the back of the caliper and the front disc, and then you just give it a few winds until you can see it move in a bit, and then the caliper lifts off nice and easy. Rest that on the box. 
uh, undo the bit of the hose that attaches to the pipe. Uh, leave it on the caliper for the time being. You can, it's easier to undo once you've taken it off. So undo the hose from the pipe. You can take the caliper away. Um, check that you can actually undo the hose, but leave it on while you um, while I brush the caliper just to stop any bits going in. Uh, then you can take the two bolts off that hold the rest of the caliper on. Uh, I've been putting a blowtorch on both of them just to make sure, because they're pretty tight, just to make sure they haven't seized with rust and end up shearing off. So those have all come. They've been. I used a breaker bar and then I managed to break the end off that. So I started using a 16mm spanner and just smacking it with a hammer once I'd heated them up and they undid. Uh, then you can take the rest of the caliper off and the disc, my discs took a hell of a beating with a great big heavy hammer before they came off. Um, that's about it for taking it all off. It's much the same for reverse really, when you're putting it all back on. Um, yeah, make sure you reattach the hose to the caliper um, while it's off. That makes it a lot easier. Um, make sure you get the pads right around. They're pretty obvious because the, the the inside one has got usually got like a metal kind of clip which slots inside the piston. And don't forget your, your clip at the end. I've put some new ones on. Probably don't need that. But. And I don't know whether some discs you've got to check you've got the vents the right way around. Mine are exactly the same as the ones I took off and the front ones as well. I've seen some people uh, use air to push the pistons out. Um, I was struggling to really find any way of making an airtight connection to this. So because I'm replacing the calipers, uh, I just got a big pair of these uh, dust or spanner, more grip things, whatever they are. And I literally just hooked my feet around where the bolts get through. And then yeah, just pulled it, and then it took a bit of bit of strength, but you can see it's come right up the top now. There you go. Just could have put some cardboard underneath to catch any excess brake fluid. Okay, as you can see, I've basically just torn away most of the the main seal. Or the rubber housing, whatever it's called. I've been trying to cut it away, but it seems that you can actually get a really small screwdriver just where the seal finishes. That's probably the best angle. So, yeah, you can get a little screwdriver in there and see so you can lever it away. So, there's the remained a bit so all that's left now is the little ring and just on just on the inside there and you've got to be quite delicate um hooking that out because you don't want to scratch the inside of the, the cylinder
go. Seal doesn't look too bad. Still quite springy. But I'll put the new one in anyway. Um, so it says to give it a clean with um, methylated spirits. So I'll go and do that. Use some brake fluid to lubricate the seal ring. That slots in pretty easy. Don't forget to put the silicon on the on the pistons which comes with the refurbished kit. Don't push the piston all the way in, push it about halfway in. Uh, makes it easier to get the rubber boot um, onto the piston because it sits in a little channel that runs around the edge. Smaller bit of the seal sits in the the, the uh, on the dip that runs around the front of the piston. Easier when the piston is not quite all the way in, so don't push it all the way in before you put the front bit of the seal on. Then slide it all the way in to get the rest of the seal to sit. Probably in hindsight, I would have just bought some some refurbished calipers because it's pretty much a pain in the ass trying to do these um, and they're not really that expensive so yeah I'd probably recommend buying refurbished calipers I'll change these two Rubber vomit things. seal, the big outer seal, never seems to, and it took ages to cut away the remains of the previous one, just so use a really thin sharp screwdriver and a stunny knife to try and cut that away as much as I can, but it never seems to sit amazingly well against the caliper, but there we are, must be the way it's supposed to be. I've undone this because it wouldn't undo on the car. So I can remove that now and get the new one on. Just 
a bit of a pain in the ass to get to catch. I'm just being a bit cautious because it was a bit tight. I didn't want it to cross to it. Looks like it's going in straight. Do that up hand tight. Loosen the uh, the bleed nipple while it's off. Just to check that you can undo it. It's a lot easier while it's off the car. That was a six bill spanner. So you see the the brake pad that goes Inside the car has got one of these spring retention, metal retention devices on it. Pull that back out. I'm going to use a bit of copper grease. There's Allen key bolts in there really. Means I can't put the cap back on. I have to remember that then. I just need to put some grease where the pads move. Probably shouldn't be using the fingers. Take a bit of pressure, and then the other one just doesn't just sits in there. So this um, disc was absolutely seized on. I uh, was smashing it with a great big hammer for ages until it finally came loose. Um, well, don't forget to take this screw out as well. Um, so when reassembling, put the disc on, put the screw back in, um, bolted in that section. Um, so the new braided hose, you need to screw that onto the, the rest of the caliper before you put it on. Then you clip the hose in uh, into the metal clip just around the back. Then you can attach the other end of the braided hose to the, the, the brake pipe in the distance there. there we go. Um, then you can bolt the rest of the caliper back on. Um, 
Don't forget to put the the wear sensor back in. If that's if you've got one of them on that side. And then don't forget to put the clip back in as well. Okay, so we should be ready to uh, to bleed the brakes now. Um, so what I'm going to use is like a pressurised um, system to bleed them. So I filled that up with the new brake fluid. I pressure checked it before just to make sure it wasn't leaking. Just connect up the reservoir and then the air is coming from one of my tyres which I've let down to 20 psi. So I've connected a pipe to the bleed nipple which goes to a container. Uh, I've turned it about half a turn. You can just see it bubbling where air has been coming out for a while. Now we've got some liquid coming out. I'm hoping I'll be able to tell the difference when it gets to the cleaner stuff. Hopefully. Let's see how we get on. I have to keep an eye on the container in the under the bonnet, make sure that doesn't run too low, otherwise we'll start sending air through. Okay, I thought we had to start from the rear left, because it's furthest away from the, the, uh, the reservoir of mine. But the Haynes manual actually says to start rear right, rear left, front right, front left. So, because I do what the Haynes manual says. So here's what the, uh, the pistons were like that I took out. Um, you can see they're pretty rusty inside. Rusty, flaky. And then the top lip that sticks out. That's pretty rusty. But from the, from the, the trough or the groove back, it's all nice and smooth. Um, it's a bit grubby. That's the front one. And then the rear ones, again, rusty inside. And then rusty around the bit above the, on the outside of the trough. And yeah, nice and smooth then, the rest of it, which is good. Okay, so I ran into two problems when I was bleeding, um, bleeding the brake system. Uh, one was one of the bleed nipples um, was a bit blocked inside, so I had to poke a needle into it to clear the blockage. So it might be worth doing that to all the, the bleed nipples um, while the, the caliper is off. Uh, also, the the pressure bleeder I've got because I hadn't used it for a while. Um, one of the pipes at the end had had some some of the brake fluid had managed to solidify in it, uh, so it was bleeding really really slowly. Um, but yeah, there was a blockage, so I could just cut that little bit of pipe out. Uh, remember to follow the manufacturer's um, bedding in process on the pads. Because I was, because I do a lot of motorway and a road driving, I drove for about a thousand miles to get rid of the red part on the brake pad, and then I did the bedding in process, which I think I did about six really hard braking from 50 down to about five miles an hour. Did them all in a row, um, and brakes, they're, still, they're a completely different level now. Um, I've done a, a track day, one before and one after changing the brakes, and it's so much different. Um, but the track day videos uh, will be coming soon, so I'll probably talk about the brakes a bit more then. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.